All right, it's finally time. It's time for the fourth installment of the Minimalist Apartment Tour. We are actually in a home now. This is Jennifer and I's first home, so things are gonna be a little different. We have a garage and we have a second bedroom. So let's go ahead and tour the home. So we're gonna go about this tour the same way I always do it, which is kind of the sequential way we would normally use our home. So the first thing we do is enter through our front door. In our front door, you'll find our entryway slash living room. As soon as you enter to your left, you'll find a Yamazaki coat rack. This has been a really nice thing to have, especially after having a kid. It allows us to hang up his hats, his carrier, as well as my wife and I's jackets. Next to that, you'll find an IKEA shoe cubby. This is something I never really looked at before because they never had it in a color or wood finish that I like. Recently, they released this lighter oak look uh, cubby and it's been wonderful. I'm a little bit upset that I didn't get it sooner. It does a great job of controlling the shoe clutter, especially if you're like us and you don't wear shoes in the home, giving shoes a home that they can return to as soon as you enter your home makes it really easy to keep the entryway clean. On top of the Ikea shoe holder, we keep a set of valet trays. This is something that I've used in every single apartment slash home I've lived in. This gives a dedicated place for you to pocket dump at the end of each day, such that you're not losing things like your wallet or your keys. And when you need to leave the home, you know exactly where they are. Our entryway is a shared space with our living room. And as you can see, we've redone our living room and we've changed up the theme. We've gone with more of a Japandi aesthetic, which combines the Japanese and Scandinavian interior design aesthetic and merges them into one. So in here, you'll find a lot of light woods and some accents of black. The focal point of this room happens to be this large print from Poster Club. This is a 100 centimeter by a 140 centimeter print. It is large and it does catch your eye, but I do find since it is a minimal print, it's not overly distracting. We framed it with this custom white oak frame from American Frames. Uh, quick tip, if you are looking to frame large format prints or art, American Frame is the way to go. You have to build the frame yourself, but you save a significant amount of money and building the frame isn't hard at all. The frame and everything all in was about $500, which isn't cheap, but when I did some cross shopping locally at big box stores like Michael's and even local framing stores, they were quoting me about a thousand to twelve hundred dollars. So for five hundred dollars, I would say it's it's quite a steal in the world of large format framing. Next to the print, we added a console, which is actually a bench. Uh, I went with a bench because I wanted a slightly lower console that didn't compete with the natural eye line of the fireplace. On top of it, we placed my favorite lamp in the entire living room. This is a Noguchi lantern. I love the asymmetrical shape of it and the light this thing emits is soft and beautiful. Next to the lamp, we have a couple of design books from Hay, Tom Sachs, and we have this book that's literally just about chairs. Next to that is a plant, and then behind the plant, we have a watercolor print. This is a print that if you've been paying close attention, you'll see has kind of carried over with us from the first apartment tour. And then we've also hung another square print from Poster Club next to that to kind of balance out the room. Beneath the bench is a new addition to our living room. This is where we station our kid. This is their play mat slash play area. My wife found all these toys. I think most of them come from Love Every but we found it in a similar color palette to the living room where I find it actually works pretty well. Clearly we have a kid, um, but I do think that the toys and the mat that my wife found works really well with our living room. So props to her. Moving along the wall, you'll find our TV. This is the Samsung frame. This is the first generation and it's still going strong. The newer ones are actually even better. They're a lot thinner, which sells this picture frame look even more. But even with the Gen 1 being a little thicker, if you add on these uh, frame accents, which look like wood, I think it does just a good of job of looking like a print that's just sitting on the wall. Underneath the TV, we have a black 
pebble looking sculpture to start building off that Japandi look. And then sitting on the marble faced fireplace, we have some H&M Home kind of modern black sculptures. I didn't know H&M Home made sculptures, but they make some very affordable, really nice looking home accents. So if you didn't know, now you know, check them out. And then finishing off on the perimeter, we have my favorite chair in the entire world. This is a lounge chair from a company called Oliver Space. When I saw this chair, I knew I wanted it because it had a different texture compared to all the other fabrics and woods that I was using in the living room. But I thought it was going to be uncomfortable, but I was willing to sacrifice it just for the look. To my surprise, the way it's woven, it creates this really comfortable suspension based cushion. And it's literally one of the best looking, most comfortable chairs I've ever had. We surrounded it with some plants, including our Monstera. And then behind that, we used this skinny legged floor lamp that also has um, some black metal accents, again, to start selling that Japandi look. And on top, I really like this lamp, again, for this textural difference. It uses this cork lampshade, which you don't see a lot of, and it creates almost this orange stained glass look throughout the day and even into the night when it's lit up. Next to the chair, we have an oldie but goodie. We have the hay side table. This is the side table with a handle that allows you to move it as your needs change throughout the day or throughout your life. We love this thing. It has a couple of watermarks, unfortunately, but it is a table that we use pretty much every single day and we love the way it fits into our life as it changes. The living room is centered around a white wool eight by 10 rug from West Elm. And then on top of that, we have this large, heavy, round, modern looking white concrete table. And then on top of that, we place an H&M home uh, console tray with some candles, a lighter, and some cup holders to prevent any type of watermarks from occurring on the coffee table. The last piece of the living room is our sofa. The sofa is a creamed fabric-based sofa and it pretty much embodies Japandi. You have this nice wood skirt on the bottom and then it's finished off with these thin black metal legs that really kind of drive home that Japandi look. For accessories in the living room, we added this ottoman from Article. Again, another textural change. This ottoman has this very nappy looking fabric, which feels nice to touch, but also again, changes up some of the fabric in the room. And then for some additional seating, additional side tables, we purchased three of these wood stools from Ikea. This is probably one of the best things that Ikea makes. It comes together so easily. It's three screws. The quality is amazing. The wood is actually pretty nice and they nest on top of each other. This is key, I think, for minimal living rooms if you're looking to entertain. These three stools can become three more places for people to seat, as well as three extra side tables if you need to host and wanna put some extra food or drink somewhere other than the floor. So that's our living room. From the living room, you'll also see this large standing mirror from Scandinavian Designs. This makes the overall home feel a little bit larger and gives a place for my wife and I to check ourselves before leaving the house, ensuring we don't have any stray milk or baby drool on our shirts. Um, next to the mirror, you'll see we went with a darker wood in the dining room. In all honesty, this is not by design. This is just residual or leftovers from our original apartment tours. But I do like that it creates its own identity by having a darker shade of wood than the Japandi based living room. We got the round dining table and set of four West Elm chairs used on Facebook Marketplace. The dining table is a little wobbly, but does its purpose, especially for the price we got it for. Behind the dining room set, we have our most asked about piece of furniture on this channel, which is the article sideboard in Walnut. This is a beautiful, simple piece of furniture that can be used in multiple ways. On top of the sideboard, we have a set of H&M sculptures in a lighter ceramic, followed by one of our favorite cooking books from Alice Waters. We leaned some more prints from Poster Club on here, and then we finished it off with a lamp from Artifox. On top of the sideboard, you'll also find my favorite, most underrated interior design essential, which is a smart speaker. 
This one actually comes from today's sponsor, Anchor. This is their Soundcore Motion X600. Inspired by theater acoustics, the Soundcore Motion X600 has five drivers and five amplifiers that are positioned to deliver sound all around you. The speaker has a unique sky driver and a fully crafted 3D grill around the perimeter of the speaker that when paired with the spatial audio delivers three dimensions of spatial sound. We like to place our speaker in the center of our home on top of our dining room sideboard. From the dining room, the speaker can deliver up to 50 watts of sound that can fill up not only the dining room, but our kitchen and living room as well with high quality sound. While powerful, the speaker is still portable and lightweight, making it easy to carry between rooms to transform any part of your home into an immersive listening space. And with 12 hours of listening time, you'll never have to worry about running out of music even when you're on the go. Last but not least, you can pair the speaker up with the Soundcore app to customize the sound signature of the speaker itself. Since I listen to a variety of music, I really like the balance profile and find I get the most from the speaker using a balanced equalizer setting. If you'd like to learn more or check out the Soundcore Motion X600 for yourself, you can check the link down in the description below. Thanks again to Anchor for sponsoring this video. The sideboard is finished off with a 30 inch round mirror from Target that's hung on the wall. To the left of that, we have an article floor lamp that is finished in walnut and this black textile um, lampshade. And then besides that, we have our rubber tree in a black pot from West Elm. We also keep our vacuum here in plain sight. Um, it's not the most aesthetically pleasing thing, but it is more for ease of maintenance and keeping a clean home. We find that having the vacuum easily accessible allows us to do a little bit of cleanup each day, ensuring that our home stays cleaner longer. Moving right along, we have the kitchen. And as you can see, the kitchen is pretty bare. I like to keep the countertops clean. This allows us to spread out when we wanna cook and just makes it easier to move around. Uh, with that being said, we do have a couple of things on the countertop, but these are the important things. First and foremost, we have the espresso machine. This is a non-negotiable. I'm willing to give up some countertop space for it. It is the Linea Micra in white. Besides that, I have the Niche Zero for my coffee grinder of choice. And then I have a set of Weber Workshop Bean Cellar single dose canisters. The other thing on our countertop and another new addition is my son's milk setup. This thing has gotten a lot larger than I wanted it to be, but these things have been absolutely game changing and making it efficient and taking the headache of making bottles slash cleaning bottles every single day. Um, so you'll see we have the baby Brezza breast milk warmer. Next to that, I have the Dr. Brown sanitizer slash dryer. This is a absolute essential for most parents. The drying function on this thing makes it really amazing. It allows you just to place wet bottles in here, sanitize them, dry them, and then directly place them into your bottle storage drawer or cabinet. And then finally, we have the Baby Brezza formula dispenser. This is something I didn't want to buy. And for the longest time, we were just using a kettle with a scale to measure out powder as well as water. The problem with that is when baby is crying at two in the morning, you're spilling powder everywhere, spilling water everywhere, and you had just made a mess. So for the small convenience I gained by using things we already had, it ended up just creating a bigger mess. So we gave in, we caved in, and we got this formula dispenser, and honestly, I could not imagine life without it. So that's it for the kitchen, very simple. Again, we like to keep it clean, makes it easier to maintain. So moving right along, we'll cut back through our dining room and living room to get to the hallway that leads to the two bedrooms and the bathroom. Starting with the bathroom, you can see that we went with a Japandi theme here as well. We picked up these wood floating shelves from Amazon, which honestly were a lot better than I thought they'd be. This allows us to store our most used items on the shelves and have them easily accessible rather than using the under sink storage. This just allows us to easily grab things we use every single day. Wood on these shelves is actually really nice. It's this nice light 
white oak wood. And then again, to go with the Japani theme, we use this thin bezeled black mirror, which completely changed the bathroom. This is a slightly larger mirror than the one we used to have, and it makes this really small bathroom just feel so much larger. So that's pretty much it for the bathroom. Really simple, nothing too fancy there, but um, just some small interior details here that really change the space and make the bathroom feel more unique to my wife and I. The guest room is kind of in a transitionary phase. It has a bed, it has a desk in it. This will eventually be a nursery, but we've kept it the way it is because we do have quite a few people coming through to visit our new baby. Having a place where guests can sleep is always a nice thing to have. The desk in the room comes from Artifox and the bed is from Article. We have the Artifox side table as the nightstand for the bed. And then for those that care, I'll do a quick desk run through. I have transitioned to a desktop setup rather than using a laptop. I find that for me, I would much rather sit down at a desk and I find that I was doing most of my work on an external monitor such that my laptop was always closed and plugged in. So here I went with the Mac Studio. I love the SD card slot in the front and then I also paired it with the Mac Studio display. For peripherals, I'm using the Logitech MX keys as well as the Logitech MX3S mouse. On the side of the desk, I created this camera cart. This has made creating these videos a lot easier. It makes it easy to have all my camera gear out, yet still organized. This is something my wife complained about and I finally found a solution for. So lenses, camera bodies, as well as rigs or miscellaneous gear sits here that I use to create these videos. The cart itself is from Ikea and honestly, Ikea makes a lot of great things that can be used for multiple purposes. This being one of them makes a great simple house camera cart. In addition to the cart, I also store some of my gear in this closet. So this is a closet slash gear room. This closet might not look very organized, but it works for me. I have my light stands along the wall and then I have all my coats and jackets hanging. It's not the cleanest looking, but it works. And I think if you are looking or trying to find a way to store your light stands, garage hooks drilled into the wall are a great solution. Finally, we have the master bedroom. This might look a little claustrophobic. Again, we are in this transitionary phase where baby is starting to get old enough where they will transition to a nursery. But in the first couple months of having a baby, we decided to keep a bassinet bedside. This is made taking care of the baby when we are dead tired a lot easier. The bassinet is from a company called Snoo. This is a game changer. It's really expensive. My wife and I did not pay for it. We actually were lucky enough to borrow it from our friend. But if you have the money and you want an easier time putting your kid down, this thing is a game changer. Uh, next to that, we have a rocking chair that we use to feed baby as well as rock him to sleep. We have our diaper pail, and then on top of our dresser, we have a little diaper changing tray, which includes a mat, storage for diapers, and a variety of diaper changing accessories. On the dresser, we also keep this IKEA lamp. The dresser itself is this walnut dresser from Article, and then the bed in the room is actually from Thuma. That's it for the home slash apartment tour. I wanna thank all of you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.